Today's lesson is war correspondence: the eyes and ears of war. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger, and I'm Helen. And today we're going to continue talking about war correspondents. These are news reporters who go to countries in which a war is taking place, and they put themselves in danger to get information for the organization that they're working for. It could be an online news outlet, it could be a TV station, a radio station, a newspaper, or whatever. And we're talking about them being the eyes and ears of war. They let us see what's happening. Yes, and in the last lesson, we looked a bit at the history of war correspondence of this noble profession, and mentioned that messengers of ancient times can be considered the very first war correspondents. But that later on, one correspondent, one reporter named John Bell, who worked for the London Oracle, can be considered the very first modern war correspondent in the proper sense of the term. And、uh, he mentioned something about his. Duty as providing a regular and faithful diary of events of the war.、Hmm, would have been interesting, of course, to read what he wrote and to learn how he actually got that information out of the field and back to London. They probably had to mail it by post or whatever, but still, that information did get back to London, and his information or his articles appeared in the newspaper for the readers to consume, to read, and learn about what's happening. With that British Army force fighting the French. Okay, let's continue talking about war correspondence in today's lesson. We'll begin and talk about how modern war correspondence came about. As the profession has developed, however, the role of modern war correspondence has grown beyond just giving blow-by-blow -blow accounts of battles. Today. War correspondents aim to capture the human side of the conflicts they report on, shining a light on how war affects communities and ordinary people. What's more, this act of bearing witness is often done at great personal risk. 大家好，我们来看第一部分中的单字 community。它是名词，意思是群体、团体或是社区。例如。San Francisco has one of the largest Chinese communities in America. 旧金山拥有全美最大的华人群体之一。或者 ，Jody lives in a small community at the foot of the mountain. Jody 住在一个位于山脚的小社区里。下一个，我们来介绍片语 shine a light on something。它的意思是阐明或是揭示点点点。例如 ，Our report is meant to shine a light on the importance of ocean protection. 我们的报告旨在阐明保护海洋的重要性。又或者是 ，The correspondent dug deep into the local manufacturing industry to shine the light on their dark side. 该记者深入挖掘当地制造业，以揭示他们的阴暗面。接下来，我们看到片语 bear witness to something， 它有见证或是证明、为点点点作证的意思。例如 ，David's wife has bore witness to his success as a famous writer. David 的妻子见证了他作为著名作家的成功，又或者说 ，The elders bore witness to the terrible war. 那些长辈们亲眼见证了那场可怕的战争。As the profession has developed, however, the role of modern war correspondents has grown beyond just giving blow-by-blow -blow accounts of. Battles. So this sentence suggests that in the past, war correspondents, their main duty was to give blow-by-blow -blow accounts of battles. So an account is a telling, a written or spoken report of something that's happened. And here we're talking about accounts or written observations of war and battles. And these observations were blow-by-blow -blow observations or accounts. And that means that they described every single stage of an event in detail. So that is what blow by blow would mean. And of course, a blow usually is something violent. Of course, we're referring to attacks in this war between the French and the British. And well, at least that's one particular instance. It could be other wars going on as well. The duties of modern war correspondents have grown beyond just giving blow-by-blow -blow accounts of battles. They've got to do much more than just tell us what's happening in a particular battle. 
Yes, today war correspondents aim to capture the human side of the conflicts they report on, shining a light on how war affects communities and ordinary people. So while war correspondents in the past were mainly in the battlefield and they provided accounts of how the war was going on, today these correspondents also want to shed light on or shine a light on how the war is affecting people and affecting communities. So a community is basically a group of people who live in a particular area or place. And a community can be a small one or it could be a big one. It could be in the city, in the village, in the country. It's basically a group of people living together. And to shine a light on means to expose, to provide information about something that wasn't so obvious in the past, that was perhaps hidden or covered up. Exactly. So in the past, of course, they were referring to the actual battles themselves, how many soldiers were killed, how many were injured, how many casualties the army suffered. But now they want to shine a light on how the war affects communities, the people living there, the women and children, everybody else, how they are affected by the war. And what's more, or in addition, this act of bearing witness is often done at great personal risk. If you bear witness to something, that means you are a part of that situation and you can report on it directly. You're not just hearing it secondhand from somebody else. Yes, yeah, so bear witness could also mean to prove or to give evidence of something. And I could say as an example that the numerous medals won by the athlete bears witness to the athlete's greatness. So it's evidence or proof of his greatness. And of course, these war correspondents are taking great risks to bring us this information. They could be injured or even killed. They could be put in jail, tortured, you name it. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson for today. Let's move on now to the second part and find out some more. A tragic case in point is that of Marie Colvin, one of the greatest war reporters of the modern age. Colvin covered many conflicts for the Sunday Times, bravely heading into war zones around the world. In 2001, she lost the sight in her left eye after being caught in a grenade blast in Sri Lanka. Then, a little over a decade later, she lost her life while reporting on the Syrian civil war, making the ultimate sacrifice for her profession. 第二部分介绍形容词 tragic 哀痛的或是悲剧的。例如, Charlotte lost her son in a tragic car accident last year. Charlotte去年在一起悲惨的车祸中失去了儿子。又或者说, The tragic love story of Romeo and Juliet is known by many people. 罗密欧与朱丽叶的悲剧爱情故事为许多人所知。接下来我们看到单字 grenade, 它的意思是手榴弹。例如, Grenades are important weapons in wars. 手榴弹在战争期间是很重要的武器。又或者说, A stun grenade is used to temporarily disorient enemy senses. 闪光弹被用于暂时迷惑敌人的感官。下一个我们看到名词 blast, 它是指爆炸或是爆破。例如, The bomb blast blew out all of the windows in the building. 炸弹爆炸炸毁了大楼的所有窗户。又或者说, I could hear the blast from the bomb even though I was many kilometers away. 即便我在好几公里外,仍能听到炸弹的爆破声响。最后,这个字也可以做动词使用。它的意思是炸毁,发出巨响或是猛烈抨击。例如, The soldiers used a grenade to blast their way into the building. 士兵们使用手榴弹炸出了进入大楼的路。So in the previous part, we mentioned that war correspondents have a very risky job. It's very dangerous because very often they put themselves right in the middle of the firing line. And now we're going to look at a particular case in point, a particular example of a war correspondent who was very brave in doing her job. A tragic case in point is that of Marie Colvin, 
one of the greatest war reporters of the modern age. So a case in point is an example, a specific and relevant example to what has been talked about up until now. And this case in point can be described as tragic. So something that's tragic is very sad because it usually involves death or suffering. Exactly. So this is a tragic example or a tragic case in point of what we mentioned above. And we did say that reporters not only have to report on the actual battles themselves, but they also have to shine a light on how war affects the little people, the communities nearby the battlefields. And so this is an example. It's a tragic case in point, and that is the case of Marie Colvin. And she is considered one of the greatest war reporters of the modern age. Colvin covered many conflicts for the Sunday Times, bravely heading into war zones around the world. So if you're a reporter, we often talk about you covering a story. Oh, yes. Can you cover the riot that is going on down at City Hall? Go down there and get some information, take some pictures, interview some people, find out what's going on. So reporters have to cover certain stories. They have to go there and get the information. And she covered many conflicts for this newspaper called the Sunday Times. And yes, indeed, she bravely headed into war zones around the world. Even though she knew it was quite dangerous, she still went there anyway. In 2001, she lost the sight in her left eye after being caught in a grenade blast in Sri Lanka. So in 2001, she went to Sri Lanka to cover a story, to cover the conflict there. And as a result, she lost an eye. So she became blind in one eye, in her left eye, after she was caught in a grenade blast. So a blast is basically an explosion, an explosion from dynamite, from gas leak, any type of explosion. And this particular explosion or blast was the result of a grenade. And a grenade is a small bomb that can be thrown by hand. Usually before you throw it, you have to take out a key. So you take out the key and then you throw it. And then a few seconds after you throw it, it goes off, it explodes. And grenades are often used in war. And this reporter, Marie Colvin, lost an eye as a result of a grenade blast. Yep, there was a civil war going on in Sri Lanka at the time and she got too close to this grenade and it exploded. And as a result, she lost sight in one of her eyes, in her left eye. Then a little over a decade later, after 10 or 11 years, she lost her life while reporting on the Syrian civil war, making the ultimate sacrifice for her profession. So yes, indeed, she did suffer from the loss of vision in her left eye when a grenade exploded close to her in Sri Lanka. But then after 10 years, she was covering the Syrian civil war. She was reporting on that war going on in Syria. And she made the ultimate sacrifice for her profession, which it is for lots of reporters who die every day reporting on wars and conflicts. Yes, and Marie Colvin is an example of somebody who took on this noble profession, dedicated her whole life to it, and as a result, lost her life as well. If we talk about the ultimate sacrifice, we're talking about dying. And of course, we also have the term to pay the ultimate price, which means you died for some particular reason. Maybe a soldier threw himself on a grenade to protect his fellow soldiers, so we could say, he made the ultimate sacrifice or he paid the ultimate price to protect others. And in this particular case, she lost her life covering this war. Hopefully her sacrifice will not be wasted and we'll all pay attention to what's happening in Syria and in other places around the world. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson for today. Let's move on now to the third part. Indeed, Though we may not often think of reporters as heroes, Colvin and those like her are more than worthy of the title. They risk their lives to serve as a vital link between conflict zones and the rest of the world, ensuring that the horrors of war never go untold. 
Indeed, though we may not often think of reporters as heroes, Colvin and those like her are more than worthy of the title. So we usually think of heroes as warriors, as police officers, firefighters, but we don't often think of reporters or war correspondents as heroes. But Colvin and those like Colvin, those as brave as her, are more than worthy of the title. So if you're worthy of something, then you deserve it because you've done the things or you have the qualities or abilities to deserve that thing. And the thing here that we're talking about is the title of hero. And basically, Colvin is worthy of the title of hero. And those like her are also worthy of the title. They deserve the title because they sacrificed a lot. They made the ultimate sacrifice in order to get the news to readers back home. And here we've got the phrase more than, which places emphasis on this. You could say that uh, she's worthy of the title, but uh, if you want to emphasize it, you could say she's more than worthy of the title. You could also use this if you want to invite a friend over to your house for dinner. Yes, you're welcome to come over and have dinner, but if you want to emphasize it, you could say, oh, you're more than welcome to come over and have dinner. We've got some great food prepared for you. Come on over. And yes, indeed, we don't think of reporters as being heroes, but、uh, hey, Colvin and other ones like her, other people like her, are more than worthy of the title of being a hero, and they risk their lives to serve as a vital link between conflict zones and the rest of the world, ensuring that the horrors of war never go untold. Okay, so again, these are the things that、uh, war correspondents do: they risk their lives to serve as a vital link. Between the world and these conflict zones, I don't think they're doing this on purpose. They just need to go in there and get that information. That's what they want, but they do know it's a very dangerous situation. They may run into the wrong people. The vehicle they're traveling in may hit a landmine or something like that, or they may be taken captive and taken for a ransom or whatever. So, indeed, they do risk their lives because they're trying to serve as a vital link between these battlefields and the rest of the world. Right. And they want to ensure that the horrors of war never go untold. So, if you're not in the middle of a war, you may not know just how horrible it is, just how many terrible things happen to families, to children, and it's really horrible. And you have these war correspondents whose job is to let other people know exactly what the horrors are. And if it weren't for the war correspondents, then these stories, these situations, may go untold, which would mean that nobody would know about them. Exactly. We're talking about the horrors of war. Horror, of course, is a terrible thing. It can scare us. It can involve a lot of violence. Maybe you like horror movies, for example. You like scary movies. And of course, we want to make sure that these horror stories are never untold. They never go untold. In other words, they are told. To us, so that we know about them, and that we are aware of these terrible conflicts that go on all over the world, and maybe we should do something to stop them, or maybe help out、uh, for refugees or whatever. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Let's listen now to Hanny, our beloved Chinese teacher. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点课文第三部分写到：事实上，尽管我们可能不常将记者视为英雄，但是 Colvin 以及像他一样的人非常值得这个头衔。那么文中是用到 more than worthy of the title 来表达非常值得这个头衔。那么 more than 在这里是表达非常极其，意思就相当于 very 或是 extremely。我们用 more than 加上形容词就可以表达非常怎么样怎么样。例如 ，I'm more than happy to help。我非常乐意帮忙。好，那也顺便补充几个跟 more than 相关的用法。第一个呢，我们可以用 more than a little。这个 a little 原本是少量的意思嘛，可是我们在前面加上 more than， 却可以表达出很多、非常，意思也会跟 very extremely 差不多。举例来说 ，She was more than a little surprised. 
，他非常的惊讶，而不是一点点惊讶而已哦。好，再来第二个补充的是 little more than， 这表示仅仅。只是，只不过是什么什么，意思会跟 no more than 或是 nothing more than 或是 only 意思相近，常常用来修饰名词。举例来说 ，The cake is made with little more than eggs, flour, butter, and sugar. 这个蛋糕的原料就只是鸡蛋、面粉、奶油和糖，就这样而已。好，再看个例句。He had nothing more than a few dollars in his pocket. 他口袋里仅仅只有几块钱。那再看到第三个补充的是 more than just。之后呢，接名词就可以表达不只是什么什么，像 they are more than just friends， 他们不只是朋友。那英文有一个用语叫做 more than just a pretty face， 这是用来表达说某人不只是有漂亮脸蛋而已，不只是长得好看而已，他还有其他的优点。好，那么课文最后写到说，他们冒着生命危险，作为冲突地带和世界其他地方的之间的重要连结，确保战争的恐怖永远都会。会被揭露。那文中是用 never go untold 去表达永远都会被揭露。那么 untold 是形容未透露的、无以名状的。那么 go untold 就是表达没有被讲述、揭露或报道。那它的结构就是用 go 加上形容词来表达。我们就来补充这个用法。Go 当连缀动词呢，它带有那种变得、变成的语义，后面接形容词来描述它的变化。那像 go bad 就可以描述食物变质啊、坏掉 ；go stale 可以描述食物、面包变得不新鲜。那也可以描述像婚姻、交往关系等等变得平淡无奇、了无新意。还有 go wrong 表示事情出错。发生问题，还有如果我们看到 go unnoticed， 则是表达未受到注意、被忽略等等的意思。好了，那么以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾简单字吧。Community. After moving to the small town, Mr. and Mrs. Long soon became familiar with the local community. Tragic. The sudden loss of a loved one is a tragic event. Blast. When the bomb exploded, it created a powerful blast that destroyed several buildings. Ultimate. Winning the championship was the ultimate achievement for the team. Worthy. Their great achievements make them worthy of recognition and praise. Discussion starter starts now. Here is our discussion starter for today. The question is: Would you be interested in a career as a war correspondent? Why or why not? I would have no interest in being a war correspondent since I think this job is too risky. I could risk my life. I don't think I want to make the ultimate sacrifice for the truth. I would rather stay at home and read the news. Well, that's how I feel nowadays. But I suppose when I was back in university, and when I was a journalism major, I thought a career as a war correspondent could be very appealing. If you want to be a reporter, of course, you might.、Uh, Report on、uh, mundane events like what's going on in the courthouse, what's the police beat, or whatever. But if you really want an exciting career in journalism, hey, maybe you should be a war correspondent. But now that I'm older, I'm like Helen. I think I'd rather stay home and be nice and safe. Well, everyone, today's article has come to an end, and I sure hope you enjoy reading along with us. I am Helen. I am Roger. See, See you, you next time. time.